Would you believe that this woman, who was 10 months pregnant, had to go up the mountain to pick water. Suddenly her foot slipped and she fell to the ground heavily. The woman's pants continued to owe Elsie blood. She was so sad that she couldn't say a word. People's emotions can't be felt by each other. Another woman in the village had just given birth to a son. People celebrated her joyfully. In this remote, backward North African village, only a woman who gives birth to a son is considered useful. The women sing to each other, comparing the number of sons they have given birth to. Leela looked so lonely in the crowd of celebrators. She was puzzled by this absurd custom and express her anger at the women who were so happy to have sons. However, this fueled their desire to show off. They sang loudly about the honor of having a son. Under such a perverse concept, the women of the village talk most about their husbands and children. Because of their religious beliefs, no one here uses contraception. They keep getting pregnant and miscarrying one after another. Because even if they are pregnant, they still have to go up the mountain to collect water. Many women lose their children on the mountain road, while their husbands live a leisurely life. Looking at these oppressed women, who didn't know they were being oppressed, Leela couldn't help but stand up for them. She said that men should follow the example of other villages and bring water to their villages. But her mother-in-law was the first to contradict her. She said it was traditional for women to carry water up the mountain. If they miscarried because they were carrying water, then they couldn't give birth themselves. Hearing Leela's absurd statement, the most respected old man in the village came forward. She had long been disgusted with the idle men of the village. And women are forced to do everything. She cited herself as an example saying that she had been pregnant 19 times but had 12 miscarriages because she had to carry water. There are many people in the village who have had multiple miscarriages, but they don't realize the root of the problem. The old man supports Leela's proposal to let men carry water. Then Leela proposed that all women go on strike in bed because it was their only right. But the women didn't want to do it at all. They left in droves and in the end only a few of them stayed. The road to resistance was difficult, but Leela would not give up. The men of this village have an easy life. They sit at the entrance of the village every day, chatting and drinking coffee. They don't have to earn money or work hard to support their families. Their women take on all the responsibility. Once upon a time, the men didn't have to work because of the war. But now that the war has subsided, the tradition remains intact. Women have to go to the mountains to collect water because of the constant drought. Many women have lost their babies in the process of collecting water. However, the men are still not satisfied. If a woman does not give birth to a son, they still think the woman is useless. One day, a group of tourists came to visit the village. The women used the performance as an opportunity to mock the men here for not working to support the family and for not caring about their wives. This made the men on the spot ashamed of themselves. But the tourists didn't understand their language. At night, the women also resisted. Some let their children sleep between the couple. Some firmly refused to be touched by their husbands. Men don't know how to cope. They gathered at the entrance of the village to discuss how to deal with the women. They finally decided to use violence to solve the problem. The women had a hard time fighting back. Leela knows that it is hard to fight against the extreme male power, but she hopes they won't give up. Some in the crowd mocked her. Leela's words are not really convincing because her husband, Sammy, is a wonderful man. When he learns of Leela's strike, Sammy offers to teach Leela some of the classics on the advancement of women. But the strike went badly. The men of the village, noticing the peculiarities of the group of women, gathered together to discuss countermeasures. Several of the men, led by Sammy, agreed to build water pipes for the women, but the stubborn group felt that the women were rebelling. They pointed the finger at Sammy and the two groups fought with each other. Word of the women's strike spreads, and people from other villages accuse them of being sirens. Even Leela's family called to stop it. This path of resistance is really hard to follow. The men wanted to change their wives in mass because their wives were revolting, but in reality, the women just wanted running water. The drought in the north, requires a long walk up the mountain to get water. According to the village tradition, only women can do household chores such as fetching water. Many pregnant women miscarried on the trail, but the men felt it was the women's business. Anger unites the women. They formed a circle and tied the thorny vines with their bare hands. They didn't stop even when their hands were cut. The women made a formula signboard of protest. They swore to the men that the protest would never end until the tap water was built. The men were so angry that they set fire to the sign board, but they underestimated the determination of the women. They could burn the sign board, but they could never extinguish the anger in the women's hearts. To help his wife, Sammy, the only sober man in the village, went to the government to apply for the introduction of running water, but he was rejected by the staff. The staff said that women are ungrateful creatures. If they are given running water, they will ask for electricity, and if they have electricity, they will ask for a washing machine. Sammy was very helpless but had to find another way. Fortunately, a journalist lived in the village, although he only published stories about insects and other creatures. But Sammy believes that the human condition deserves more attention than the insects. However, the journalist was reluctant to help. For him, it was not worthwhile to interface in such matters. 
to deal with the rebellious women, the village chief called in the help of a religious elder. The elder knows that these women are not educated, so he deceived them. He told them that God had decreed that husbands could beat their wives as their fathers had taught them, but not too severely, and that as a wife, she should obey her husband and not resist. This didn't fool Leela. She opened the tour and, and recited the will of Allah word for word. Leela's arguments rendered the elder speechless. He even was turned by Leela. He would argue against women who did not agree with her. The women at the Harvest Festival convey their complaint against men in song. The journalists were so impressed by their courage that they were determined to help them get the story out. Soon the government sent someone to set up running water. The women danced joyfully, celebrating their victory. But with running water, they were still responsible for many household chores. They still lived under the gaze of men. The inequality of men over women still existed and oppressed women. But at least they are starting to wake up. Every revolution is hard. But the battle is not between men and women, but between normal human beings and extreme power. Women need more power to change their destiny. It's absurd, but it's the reality. There is a long way to go for gender equality.